What's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we're tackling Green White Magecraft. And the reason is, y'all requested it. Like, we've been trying. I had a couple of different versions and I couldn't get them to work out. And then I talked to another streamer who goes by Mythic Match. Feel free to check him out over on Twitch. And Matt said, like, hey, I have this version that's playable. You should check it out. I did. I had the same problems that my different versions had. So that got me nowhere. And then, coincidentally, William Huey Jensen, who writes over at Channel Fireball, actually put up a list and he had a little thing in it that actually seemed to solve the problem I was having. So I will talk about that and more, really, as this video goes on. But I think he might have actually figured it out and I think this version is actually pretty damn good. So I think y'all should enjoy this, at least those of you that are requesting it, or maybe if you just wanted a Magecraft deck, well, hopefully this scratches that itch for you. But something else I wanted to show you. We did a thing. Let me know how you feel about that. We can do different colors too. But anyway, for now, let's go take a look at this green-white Magecraft list. Okay, so like I said, I think the majority of the list that you put together in this style are going to really only play probably about from a selection of, I don't know, maybe 15 to 18 cards. There's not a lot to really pick from that can go into this list because you have a lot of requirements, right? Your deck, your cards have to be cheap so you can cast multiples in a turn. You have to have at least some number of ways to protect your creatures because they're relying on each other and spells. So you can't just have them getting picked off. And then you actually have to figure out the color combination I guess the quantity of each color matters right so you need some number of spells you need some number of things that have magecraft right so like you're, you're already eating up several slots so your wiggle room becomes very small because magecraft is consigned to one set you really don't have a lot of options to pick from but starting at the top one of those creatures is clever lumamancer super solid gotta play it by itself it's not great needs a lot of support guiding voice now, this is one of the cards, I think, when you're building these decks that can get overlooked. But the biggest thing about it is Guiding Voice basically guarantees you have two spells. And that's the thing, because these decks can really peter out if you don't have spells to pump your creatures. So this guarantees you get at least that, and you get a plus one, plus one counter. So even something like Clever Lumamancer, that's a zero one, now at least becomes a one two. And you can at least block and get some chip damage in there with it. Blizzard Brawl. This brings us back to playing some Snowlands, but not too big of a problem, really. But this does allow us to remove things, and it's a spell, so gets the job done. Charge Through. This is a little bit of a uh, quirky one, but you're playing it mostly because it draws a card, right? So again, we're talking about having more spells and replacing cards, giving us more to play. But if you do get a creature really big, it is really unfortunate whenever they chump block it. So this is a way you can at least get that damage in when you have that, you know, 8, 10, sometimes 14 power creature. Then we're playing Snakeskin Veil, another way to get a plus one, plus one, and give something hexproof. But then we also have Wild Shape, and this is one of the new cards out of uh, Forgotten Realms. And the interesting thing here is you do get three choices, right? You can turn a thing into a turtle with hexproof, you can turn a thing into a spider with reach, or into an elephant with trample. We'll probably use all of these at different points throughout the video, right? This card's pretty flexible. Uh, it is an instant. It's only one green, so it's checking a lot of the boxes that this deck wants. Also remember, when you're turning something into, say, like an elephant, you're actually changing the base power and toughness. So if you have a clever Lumamancer, and let's say it's already like a 4-5, well, it's going to change the base power toughness to a 3-3. Three, three. So usually, if it's a 4-5, that means you've already cast two spells that triggered it twice. So you're going to go all the way up to a 7-7, seven, because seven, you're going to have a 3-3 three, three with a plus 2, plus 2, and then an additional plus 2, plus 2, right? So keep that in mind, too. It's almost like just giving your creatures a bonus in some cases. Then we have Leon and Light Scribe. Play spells, pump your team. Uh, show of Confidence. Only two in this list. I, there's probably an argument to be made for a third, but two is fine. Dragon's Guard Elite. Another Magecraft creature. This time it just gets a plus one, plus one on its own. And then this this was the card. This is the card I think a lot of builds have overlooked. And I think it was actually really good for these lists. Now, it is double green. And that causes a small problem. So, I mean, we will admit that. We know it's going to cause some early mana issues here or there. However, it's a 3-3 three, three for 2. 
So it's a sizable body, which this deck doesn't really have otherwise. And it allows you to get extra cards and keep that train going, right? That's a thing we've talked about already. Keeping cards in hand, keeping spells available. This is going to allow you to do that. So we'll see how this plays out. And then to Mavenda because Mavenda is just awesome, right? You get to play a spell for free. Not for free, but you get to reuse a spell out of your graveyard every turn. And at instant speed, it's awesome because, you know, if you say you only have one wild shape or snakeskin veil, you can protect your team a lot longer. If you're trying to finish the opponent off, you can replay something and then play a show of confidence, or even play show of confidence, then play a second one. So you get three plus one plus ones, plus you get all those triggers. So, like, sometimes that can just end the game, right? Lands were playing five snow covered planes, two layer of the Hydra, six snow covered forests, four Arctic tree line, which is actually a snow land as well. Comes in a play tap, but it produces green and white. And then we have four branch loft pathways. So not really going too heavy, but obviously everything's pretty cheap in here with Mavenda being the most expensive thing at three and there's only two copies. So yeah, that's a list. As always, y'all know the drill. After the games, catch me up on the back end. We'll talk about what we would change in this list or any updates we'll make. And we'll have a card spotlight for you. Oh boy, all right. This feels same, like I'm still having some of the same issues. But let's see, we're gonna be just mono green magecraft, I guess, is what we're setting up for here. All right, because we can't not play the one creature in our hand. Hopefully we draw some white mana. Making a Jund Punisher deck for EDH, because your play group plays incredibly slow. That's fair. If you have a slow group, that can make games very boring. Uh, man, we can't do anything with this. We just attack. That's so sad. All right. Oh, we didn't get land. We'll just sit here with all these blizzard brawls doing nothing. Hi, yeah. What? No, okay. Sure. This is super sad. And the opponent missed mana too, it looks like. Oh, geez. This is such a terrible fight. Okay, we finally got some mana. But I don't even know if we want to tap out to play of uh, uh, Mavinda here. I don't know if... I feel like as soon as I do this, one of these is going to get hit with uh, the, the three, three mana bounce spell. Divide by zero. I guess we got to try. I mean... Because it's not going to be... Oh, it was Girardi. I I was about to say, it's not going to be Girardi's Disruption because it would have just played a land. Oh, my God. Like, that just happened. Wow. Never would have bet on that in a in a million years. Girardi's disruption, like that next level us though. Not gonna lie, totally next level, man. Because <laughs> I was just like, yeah, there's no way. If they had a Girardi's disruption, they would already played it. This is just the deck we played up, put on YouTube yesterday, or today, I guess. All right, Dryad, sure. All right, so they're going to play one of their big spells next turn. That's pretty much what's going to happen here. So can we do enough? Let's see. Yeah, we can. Because we have a Blizzard Brawl. Since they can't sacrifice that. And then that's three... And then we can give Mavenda effectively another plus one. I don't know that it's game yet. I know opponents try to like GG us, but I'm like, I don't. Seven, okay. And if they're accepting of it, then sure. Changes the base power and toughness. Yeah, so we'll just make it a 3 3. 
Now we'll GG. I know a lot of people are just like GG and quick, and I'm just like, man, I gotta double check. Uh, this is an easy mulligan. Uh, boy. Ugh. Ah, uh, we're gonna keep. Sadly, I think I gotta do this. Mostly because if we don't draw the other one, I can at least use this. Go get the thing that lets me draw land. Ah, well, that changes that too. Son of a gun. Okay, well, decisions are made. See you later, Red Phoenix. Oh, enjoy your birthday. Yeah, I think the funny thing is, Ceaseless Roses, I don't even know if I could say that last situation was a particular tough matchup. Uh, let's see, what do we do here? Do to do to do to do to do to do to do. We go get. Maybe we just go with pest summoning. We can at least cast that. And it's two more duders, so I mean, you know. And it's credit for a spell. And we'll get a card in our hand from the attack just from playing this. Ah, somebody's going to be dying here. <laughs> well, here's the good news. If they just kill the pack leader, then we get a bunch of bonuses. If they kill the light scribe, we still get a card. Okay, well, you know we have this already. And this is where you kill the pack leader? Nope, it's just an umbral juke. Sure. Don't hate it. All right. And the board is swept. As expected. All right, we need spells. Less creatures, more spells. Mm, not that. Kill card on the werewolf. Yep, poison the cup. Makes sense. Well, we have to hope there's not a sweeper. Though they did bottom both things, so that's a bonus for us, right? Alright, let's see what happens. Okay, we got there. Man, I hate these arctic tree lines. I can't say that enough. Like, I'm for real just not a fan. But don't get me wrong, I, I get why they're here. But man, do I hate them. I am hoping for an untapped land of any kind next turn. That is not it, but that's at least acceptable. I can go for that. Because this lets me, like, Blizzard Brawl one of those. And then I can attack with an Indestructible 4-2. Okay. Okay. 
All right, well, that duder is going to be big for a second here. How do I feel about playing control? Like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I put some up on my YouTube channel from time to time. They're they're boring, but like, I'll play it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We're gonna get one counter, so that'd be four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, okay. Obviously not blocking, but, uh, sure. Okay. Especially on Arena. Like, control on Arena is an interesting choice because you're, you're, like, reducing the number of games you can get in by more than half. You know? In a lot of cases. Alright, so this thing's gonna become a 4 4. Yeah, no blocks. We're just looking for a spell. That is an interesting spell to get. Huh. So, really, we kinda have to play this and hope to draw another spell off of it, right? And we have to do this as a sorcery because. Ah. Oh, uh, God, man. I don't want... Yeah, I have to. Jeez. Okay, that's better. Maybe. Kind of sucks. Am I going to actually get rid of Blizzard Brawl here? Nah. I don't think I am. <laughs> the opponent didn't want to figure... Yeah, there's a lot of math to be figured out, both for and against Magecraft decks, that's for sure. God, a stupid tree line again. I get why they're in here, but I think I'm going to cut them. Yeah, I kind of have to play this like this, though, because we have to protect the Leonin, so I can't, you know... You know you want to foretell something, opponent. Come on now. You're not fooling nobody. Ooh, this is a real decision, though. I guess we go with the wolf? Since we don't have that many spells? I feel like Control tries to know the meta decks and what to play around and prepare to run. Uh, in my experience, they're probably just going to counter this, right? In my experience, the control decks, the work is really just before the game, right? Because if you know the metagame and all that stuff, whatever, then you can just build the deck with the cards you need. Once you're playing the games, control feels a lot easier. Like, that's why I get bored playing control decks, is like the... Like, the things people like about Control, about, like, being the same every time, knowing exactly how every card works, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's what people want. Like, I'm playing Control deck, non-Control decks, because I'm, I like the variety. I want to be doing other things. You know? Uh, jeez, I don't even know. I have a feeling we're going to need to exile a dragon soon. Oh, well, expressive iteration, okay. But yeah, and that's not, like I said, it's not to say that there's anything wrong with playing control decks at all. I think control decks are fine. They should be part of the game and all that, but they just, they just don't hit the same way for me. Like, I get very bored. Every tournament I've ever played, I've just decided, like, I already know at the end of a long day, 
I'm not going to enjoy playing a, a control deck for round like 11 at a Grand Prix or something. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep. All right, we'll just pass. Give us something we can fight. Well, here's something we can fight with. That kind of meets the brief. You know what? Just this. This opponent might get squirrely with some flash thing. Nope, they didn't. All right. We're going to try to have a big math turn next turn. This has to get a counter, right? Excellent. Here comes big pile of damage. Oh, I can't actually. I can't cast this because I don't have a target. Damn it. And I can't fight my own thing. Well, that sucks. All right. Well, we don't get a card. Man, Blizzard Ball might be dead in this fight. Yep, I was afraid something like that might happen. Ah, oh, that's so awful. Well, I guess I could have got in for like three more damage, which probably will matter later. Because that was probably the one time I was going to be able to get in with my opponent being shields down. Because now we're worried about them playing... Oh, no. I was going to say Shadow's Verdict, but apparently not. Uh, okay. Well, it was nice knowing you, Lair. It was nice knowing you. Oh, they didn't have it. Look at that. Okay, well, we're hoping to draw, I guess, an untapped land now. You know what's sad? I almost wanted them to take some free turns there so I would have something to target with the Blizzard Brawl. <laughs> like, that's, that's how sad it is. Like, I actually wanted my opponent to take an extra turn. Do you have a spot removal here? If that's a counter. It doesn't matter. You just stop me from getting an extra card. But we don't even need the card. All right. This hand's bad. This isn't much better. Uh, probably get rid of the werewolf because it's double green. There's a green. Uh, why so much is it, y'all? It's so boring. Oh, here we go. We're going to play some giants. Cool. At least that'd be different. I think I'm going to lead with this. Because we're going to have an easier time growing this, which makes it able to fight giants. Whereas this by itself would struggle. At least that's the logic I'm working on. I could be completely wrong in that idea. Hmm. No, I need to have another green available. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. 
Calamity Bear, all right. Wild shape this into a three three. To a permanent player deals double that damage. So I have to get this bigger. This has two pluses right now. No, it has one plus. I'd be giving another one to make it a five. I could use the other wild shape, but then I turn it into a one five, so it turns into a two three five. That's not gonna do it. So here I'm just really just trading off the Leonin, right? Alright. I'm fine with that. Let's draw a card in the process. Okay. Yep, this is where the struggle begins. Actually, not so much. We do have three snowlands. Another quick bringer. All right, you got it, opponent. Oh, uh, what can we do here? We can turn this into a 1-3, doesn't do enough. Turn it into a 3-3, three, three, it already is. Turn it into a 1-5, we can't kill a thing. Uh, We can attack, make this a 5-3. But then what do we do? And then a snakeskin veil? Uh, I mean, do we just want to trade here? Oh, you got the package? Cool, buggy man. Feel free to share pictures if you want in the Discord. I don't know, y'all. Do I just trade and fight? Is that what we're looking to do here? I mean, I guess so. I feel like we're so behind on resources, it doesn't really matter much here. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome, everybody, showing up to the stream tonight. We are goofing around with some green-white magecraft. Where, when I'm not playing my lands wrong, it's actually okay. This is probably getting countered. Yep. Like, this is what I'm saying about control decks, So Like, there's no real skill here. You're just like, I'm just going to counter the threat that they play. You know what I mean? Like, and that's not an insult to the opponent. It's just, it, you know, just is what it is. All right, one more, and they're going to be able to start attacking with a seven power land here. Yep, there it is. Now we get hit for seven. Yep. And it has ward three. So here's what we're going to do, which is kind of silly. But I'm actually going to target that with the charge through so I get a card. Yes, I'm sure. And yes, I'll pay. Nah, boy. All right. We're dead. <laughs> Seth Manfield, who's basically been a magic pro level in boss for the last five, six years, like playing red decks on the top tier stage, right? So to say that is very much like it, it's very small minded, you know? Not saying that you said that, but I, it is something you hear pretty regular. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? 
I kind of want to keep charge through. I kind of want to get rid of charge through. So there it goes. Yeah, but the thing is, like, aggro really, if you're in a real competitive game, aggro can be very good. Because assume, you know, yeah, sometimes aggro just gets the, like, hey, I'm going to do a 25 damage on the first five turns draws, right? But that doesn't happen all that often. Okay, what are we up against? Probably more red-blue decks. Do, 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 do. Yep, how'd I know? How'd I know? Oh, boy. All right, let's see what's up. Oh, they didn't even... Oh, man. Well, it's probably going to get hit with Dragon's Fire. Yeah. So it didn't really matter. We need to draw an untapped land here, though. That's going to be the big key. We need to be able to protect something with a Snakeskin Veil. We're not going to be able to get ahead. Come on, untap land. We need your help. Oh, there's black mana over there. What the hell? Well, I think this is the beginning of the end, folks. <laughs> All right, expressive iteration. Maybe they're looking for something to kill a wolf with. Hopefully not. Uh, more land. That will definitely allow you to kill a wolf. Okay. That opens up the door a little bit. Now we just have to figure out what the opponent's trying to do. Alright, we're just attacking. Galaza. Okay. Hmm. Man, if we draw a land next turn... Oh, well, now they have blockers. It doesn't really matter. Though this ram through could be pretty big. Because we could snakeskin veil, ram through, show a confidence, and that's four spells... So it'll be one, two, three. That would be three, three times. All right. Let's see if we can get there. Ah, the damn tree line. <laughs> ah, if this wasn't a tree line, we'd have a big math turn. Now we don't. Now we don't. And that sucks. Uh, see, and if I want the card, I have to do this pre-combat. Also not cool. All right, sadly, I think I have to show a confidence here. Because I have to sit on this to protect our team. Or we can't really get anything through here. This also feels like a waste with the charge through, but... All right. That's eh, not bad, I guess. I mean, it could just be a bunch of free turns coming anyway. Yep, not a surprise. All right, we go to 17, and then to some number less than 17 here. Could be more free turns. Who knows? Soul Shatter. So now we have to make a decision. Uh, 
Ooh, okay. I guess it has to be the wolf. As much as I want extra cards. Oh. Well, it's a good thing we held on to this. Oh, man. Wish we had more things to pump. This would have been a great spot for double ram throughs. Or, uh, crash through. Charge through. So many cards have a similar name. Um, do this. Attack for four. Mavinda at least allows us to play... Uh, snakeskin veil, and then we'll also get a bonus from the Leonin. So, man, there's that. Obviously, they can respond and kill it or whatever, but that's cool. If they have it, they have it. All right, now we'll block. All right, we have double charge through. I think we can do this. If we can get a damage spell. <laughs> like, Or actually, we could replay show of confidence, actually. Oh, well, there we go. So we can blizzard brawl here. And we can charge through. And this is an instant. Yep. Play this from the yard. Target that duder. Yep, that'll do it. All right, so I have to admit, his version definitely outperformed the other ones that we had, and that's really what we were looking for here. So, thumbs up to that. Now, as for what we would change, I don't really know. I mean, I wouldn't mind having another show of confidence in, and maybe finding some combination of lands to swap out those Arctic tree lines, because they were annoying at times. Maybe do something where we put in three planes and one forest might be the way to go. That being said, I also understand why the tree lines are there. So I may just leave them in the list and just deal with it. Because we still managed to win a fair amount of games even when we drew them and they felt bad. They still kind of came through and did what they needed to do. So we can only be so upset about it. It's kind of the only lands we have available, so we got to use what's there. Now, for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Goblin King. And I guess maybe Lord of Atlantis and anything else that has Landwalk. Because that's not a thing we really have in Magic anymore, and I think honestly... It might end up being too powerful if you think about it when we have so many people playing like basic snow covered lands and things like that, right? Because they still count as mountains, they still count as islands, and so on and so on. And we actually had these early on, and these cards are still very good if you're playing theme decks in any type of commander or older format, right? Because you do see a fair amount of basics or lands that count as both types. So it really gets over those too. But yeah, we had to get away from that being printed for standard legal sets because. Well, they probably would have just started dominating all the play. Which is so funny because if you rewind the clock, outside of a handful of situations, people didn't play all that much land walking stuff in the beginning. Kind of just goes to show you how much the game has changed and how much better we understand the mechanics than we did way back when. And don't forget, if you want today's deck list, it will be down in the description below, along with a bunch of other links if you want to check those out. Preferably, come by our Discord and say hello. You can be part of the brood with other 500 members in there and... Just get help with decks or anything else you want to ask about. Also, if you want to catch me live streaming, I am over on Facebook Gaming and on Twitch. The links are down there as well. And it's a good way to maybe get your deck spotlighted or even predict or recommend what we might have up here on the YouTube channel. And don't forget, if you're shopping at TCG Player for cards because we have a new Magic set out, 
or if you're shopping for anything on Amazon, I do have two links there. And if you click those before doing your shopping, you don't have to do anything else. And the channel will get a small one to 3% kickback to help us out. And finally, if you haven't, I got to ask as always, if you'd be so kind, please remember to like, subscribe, notify, super important. It's been helping the channel out so much and I love y'all for that. It has been super, super helpful. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.